Hello class and welcome to chapter 5. In this lecture we're going to talk about internal scanning and competitive advantage. So let's get started. This slide should look very familiar and in this slide we're talking about the external environment versus the internal environment. The outer two circles refer to the external environment, the societal environment or what's called sometimes the general environment, and the task environment. Um, both of those are external. In today's lecture, we're going to talk about what's inside the organization, the internal workings of the company, and how that's important for strategy development. So specifically, you're looking at the company structure, culture, and company resources. Internal scanning, similar to external scanning, re refers to looking out across a number of different factors and seeing how they affect the company. In particular, we're looking inside the organization. We're looking at company policies, procedures, organizational structure, employees, etc. Everything that's inside the organization and looking for strengths and weaknesses and how those strengths and weaknesses can help tie into an overall strategy. It's pretty simple. If there's a weakness of the company, we want to develop a strategy or set of activities that help to minimize, reduce, or eliminate that weakness. If there's a strength to the inside of the company, if there's a strength to the company, we want to set up policies, strategies, activities that are designed to help us capitalize or benefit from that strength. This goes to what's called organizational analysis, where we're concerned with identifying and developing the company's resources and competencies in order to develop what's called a sustainable competitive advantage. As we're scanning the internal workings of the organization, we want to be sure to look out for things that are both tangible and intangible. Tangible refers to resources that are physical, that you can lay your hands on and touch, such as a computer work desk, buildings, company vehicles, etc. These are all tangible resources. Intangible resources are resources that you can't touch. They're abstract, such as a company's brand name or a company's image or their reputation. They're very valuable, but they can't be touched. Capabilities refers to the organization's ability to exploit its resources. Now, exploit is not meant in a negative way here. It, it means to use, to put to good use to ensure the organization's success. Let's talk for a moment about being successful and developing a competitive advantage. Competitive advantage refers to anything that your organization does that's better than the competition. Specifically, those activities should bring in more customers, more revenue, it should help the company get more market share, something that helps separate your company from the competition in a positive way. The problem with competitive advantages is that once a company has a competitive advantage, the competitors look at that and they begin to mimic or copy that same advantage. And soon, that advantage is no longer an advantage. It's just a standard way that the, business, that, the, that the market does business. Take, for example, the fast food industry. When McDonald's came out with the value meal, that was a competitive advantage. It got more customers in the door. It got McDonald's existing customers buying more product. And it was helping McDonald's get extra revenue. Once competition saw that was successful, they quickly implemented their own value meal programs. And now it's just a standard in the marketplace. Any company you walk into, it's a fast food restaurant, you expect to see a value meal. So we can see that having a competitive advantage is important. But here's here's a catch, and this was comes from Barney, who was an academic scholar, is how do I develop a sustainable competitive advantage? Well, let me tell you how that differs from a normal competitive advantage. A sustainable competitive advantage is an advantage that lasts over time. It's enduring. It's not quickly eroded or easily copied. Specifically, it has four attributes. It's valuable, it's rare, it's imitability, meaning difficult to duplicate or difficult to copy, and its organization is able to exploit it. So valuable means that the customers identify it as being important and they're willing to pay money for it. The customers find value in it. Rare, meaning that it's not something that everybody has. For example, a company that uh, sells diamonds. They sell diamond rings, for example. If they bought a diamond mine in Africa, well, that would give them an advantage, a sustainable competitive advantage, because that's rare, and not every diamond company sell, has, has its own mine. It's also difficult to imitate. A lot of times, companies rely on technology to help them develop a, a competitive advantage. But the thing with technology is that if somebody gets a hold of it, they can reverse engineer it and create their own versions of that. Just look at the cell phone industry to see an example of this. So imitability means it's difficult to copy. There's something unique about it. Maybe we have a patent on that technology which prevents people from copying it. Look at the pharmaceutical market to see how that works. And then organization. This refers to the organization's ability 
to actually exploit this particular advantage. So put it into practice both inside the company and get it out to customers. Using resources to gain a competitive advantage is very important to all organizations. So you want to identify and classify resources in terms of their strengths and weaknesses. So once again, we're talking about scanning inside the company. Is this a strength or is it a weakness? Combine the strengths into specific capabilities and core competencies. Appraise the profit potential. So hey, does this strength actually make us money? And if so, we need to, ex we need to exploit this more. Or does this weakness cost us money? And if so, we need to stop this weakness or find a way to, to reduce its impact on the organization. Select a strategy that best exploits the firm's capabilities, and then identify gaps. So look at the competition, look at where you're at, and see how you can take that leap ahead of the competition. Here's an important concept for you to know, and it refers to knowledge. All organizations have knowledge that they contain within them, whether that knowledge is captured and codified into a database or that knowledge exists or resides within employees. There's two different types of knowledge, explicit and tacit knowledge. Explicit knowledge refers to knowledge that, that can be easily communicated and taught to other people. Oftentimes, this information is codified in terms of forms, policies, is stored into a database, and people can read it, understand it, and gain those skills. Then use those skills to help the organization be successful. In contrast, tacit knowledge is information that's very difficult to communicate. It's information that is somehow intrinsic to a person's experiences, and they can't easily communicate or teach that to other people. Now let's take and overlay this concept of explicit and tacit knowledge to the idea of a sustainable competitive advantage. A sustainable competitive advantage is something that's difficult to copy or duplicate and it's something that's valuable. So if the tacit knowledge is valuable and by its very nature is difficult to copy and duplicate, tacit knowledge can lead itself to a sustainable competitive advantage. Even if employees leave the organization, if you can find a way to retain that tacit knowledge and continue to exploit that for the organization's benefit, their financial benefit, then you're well on your way to developing a sustainable competitive advantage. There are other sources that you can look to to create a sustainable competitive advantage. You have human resources, technology and innovation, company reputation, organizational structure, employee diversity, and financial systems. We'll take a look at a few of these. Human resources can definitely become a source of a sustainable competitive advantage. And if you think about it, uh, you can't just copy and duplicate a company's workforce. And if that company has a certain culture and certain types of employees, take Google, for example, or Microsoft, that have excellent employees and have a certain culture that encourages employees to work together in a, in a very unique way to, that creates a competitive advantage for the organization, that's something that people just can't copy and duplicate um, and, and, and use toward their advantage. So that can create definitely a sustainable competitive advantage. Marketing can also help to create a sustainable competitive advantage. Specifically here we're looking at the corporate reputation, their brand that they may have, or their corporate brand. Take for example McDonald's and the brand that you have there symbolized by the golden arches. When people are driving down a road and they're hungry for some fast food and they see those golden arches, they instantly know what they're going to get. McDonald's brand is one of the most well-known brands around the world. And that's something that other companies simply can't duplicate or copy easy. You could throw a lot of money behind brand marketing, but it doesn't mean you're going to get the same results as what McDonald's has. A lot of companies use technology to create a sustainable, to create a sustainable competitive advantage. Now, as I mentioned before, this definitely can work. But you got to be able to keep that technology kind of in that tacit knowledge range where people don't know exactly what it is and they're not able to copy and reverse engineer it. You also can create a culture of innovation within the company. Take Apple, for example, which is constantly coming out with new products. So they're using technology. They know their, their technology is going to be reverse engineered, but they're constantly coming out with new technology. And that's the way that they maintain their sustainable competitive advantage. Well, that wraps it up for this lecture. If you have any questions, be sure to email them to me or bring them to class if we are meeting physics for a class. Thank you very much, and don't forget to study.